Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this video, we will show you the new tool added to Fidelity Pointwise 2023 to facilitate the quick selection of similar entities. I have in front of you a very simple case of a blood pump, and I'm going to show you the new tools that we added to facilitate the selection of similar entities. In particular, we added new selection tools to Fidelity Pointwise 2023. So if you open the software, you're going to find a new toolbar like this one right here. Some of the tools in this toolbar are going to be familiar to you, like this one right here, which is select all, unselect all, select adjacent, select all adjacent, and of course, the select adjacent angle limit tool. Those are not new. However, the new selection tools added to the software are listed down below. You have this one right here, which is going to be the select parent. This one is select children, select boundaries. This tool right here allows you to define the type of hierarchy that you want to use to select parents and children. This one right here is the select similar tool, select similar settings, and last but not least, you have the select by histogram. In this particular video, we're going to cover the select similar tool. So what this tool is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to select a particular quilt in your geometry like we have in this particular case and then select all the quilts that are similar to that one. Now, how do you define that a quilt is similar to another quilt? So for that, you're going to, of course, have to define properties. So to define the select similar properties, you can click on that button right here and it's going to open that pop-up window that you see in there to define your properties. If you want something a little bit more permanent, you can click these two arrows at the top of the toolbar and you can see that this panel is going to open up. In particular, this panel has the select similar options at the top, but it also has all the option for select similar histogram, which we're going to cover in a separate video. So when you're actually comparing quilts, you can compare using different properties. You can compare quilts using the radius of curvature. So you click that option right here and you can define in here a given tolerance for that comparison. In this case, the default number is plus minus 10%. You can also compare quilts using their average normal with a tolerance by default of 20 degrees or whatever number you like to put in there. You can compare by area. The default value for that comparison is plus minus 10%. You can compare by perimeter. You can enter in here a number for that particular tolerance for that comparison. And last but not least, you can also compare by surface closure. In particular, surfaces can be open closed or semi-closed. Any surface that is kind of like flat, like this flat surface that you have right here, that surface is going to be considered open. Surfaces like this one right here, they're going to be considered semi-closed. Any, for example, you have something like a complete sphere, they're going to be considered as a closed surface. In our case, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit close and we're going to select this particular quilt that we have right here. And we would like to select all the quilts that are actually similar to that one. So how do I define what similar quilt means? In this particular case, I'm going to compare just using the radius of curvature. Once you actually define one of these properties, you can click this button right here or simply the letter S to select all the quilts that are similar to your original selected quilt, which by the way is called a seed quilt. As you can see, after I actually push that button, all the quilts that are similar to the original quilt I selected, they're going to be selected as well. You can see down here that a table is going to show you which one was your original or seed quilt and also how many quilts have been selected. In this case, seven plus the seed quilt. And last but not least, you have, of course, in here information about the radius of curvature for these quilts because it is the property that I use to compare quilts. Let's go ahead with another small example right here. Let's assume that, for example, I would like to select all the quilts that are like similar to that one. If I use just the radius of curvature and I push the letter S, you can see that several quilts are going to be selected because they have the same radius of curvature. You have a very similar table right here with an average radius of curvature. If I want to actually limit my selection a little bit more, of course, you can add additional properties. 
I'm going to add, for example, the area to the radius of curvature. So if I start again, I'm now going to select all the quills that not only have a similar radius of curvature, but also that they have a similar area. So I'm going to push the letter S. And of course, you can see that now I'm having a much better selection. I'm selecting all those quills that are like long, skinny, and curved as intended. Another option that I would like to show you in here is that you have constraints mode. After you define your seed quills, you can select all the quills that are similar to that one, or you can select only from the pool of adjacent quills, or of course, you can select from the pool of all adjacent quills. The all adjacent quills are quills that are adjacent to the adjacent quills. So they're going to look for those quills that are topologically connected in a recursive manner. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.